This conference will now be recorded. Okay. So, um, good evening, Mana. Good evening. Good morning, I should say. <laughs> so, now we'll start with uh, the topic that we were discussing yesterday. We were talking about uh, single row functions yesterday. Mm -hmm. right. Like I've told you that single row functions are those which gets executed for every line exec uh, fetched by the recent query. Mm -hmm. And we have discussed a few functions uh, like length, upper, lower, so basically these all functions that we discussed yesterday they were of string type that means text category mm -hmm. okay so land upper lower trim substring replace etc and then the last function we were talking about was care index mm -hmm. okay so what is this care index function is do you remember yesterday we talked about substring so mm -hmm. substring was giving me part of the string right similarly yeah. the care index it works on the similar ground but instead of giving you part of the string it gives you position of the string mm -hmm. okay so index of that character that is what it's all about so uh, it accepts two parameter the first parameter is the character that you are looking for and the second parameter is the string in which that character is present. Okay, so when I'm saying care index W from hello world, so it is giving me seven. That means W it is at the seventh position in the string. Okay, so this way if you want to look for a particular value, you can look for it. For example, uh, there is an email address. Okay, so I want to look for the position. Hmm, let's say at the rate. At the rate, abc dot pqr. And the company name is let's say xyz xyz.com like this this is suppose the email address and i want to know the position of at the rate in it so it's like this mm -hmm. okay so um maybe uh, suppose there is a email column and you want to extract name from it in that case, you can take help of the care index column uh, function. So it will be a combination of substring and care index. So you will use a nested function in that case. Let's right? try that. So, let's, no, let's actually, try. I was giving you, <laughs> I was to give you this as an assignment. Uh, huh. Sorry, but so, let's try this, please. My homework is thing is like, I'm doing this weekend thing and with you and uh, off late, I think by my next weekend only, I will have that kind of same vigor, same energy levels to kind of keep up to your lectures, practice and this thing. So I'll, I'll appreciate if you can solve the problem right here and give me a smaller, simple problem, probably the homework thing the homework thing you are you're putting in notepad and you share with uh, uh, mm. the mm. analyst era people and mm. because i did not even get yesterday's recording they should have given me yesterday but i will i will just tell them again maybe right they'll now. be giving it to you um the both the days together maybe that's how it that, is. That, that is like yeah a little not efficient because uh, it's my night and it's your day. The moment you, they get the recording, 
um, processed from the cloud. They should send it so that if I get up in the morning and if I want to just go through it, it will be useful. Both the recording and the uh, and the homework and the questions you share. So I'll probably uh, ask them again. Hmm. To share, share it that very day after a few hours. Okay. So, either, so the question turned out to be that there was an email and from the email we were supposed to try what what we were supposed to extract so from a given string from a random string we were just trying to extract the email hmm. okay See, this is how it goes. Mm -hmm. First of all, we ex use substring function, right? To extract mm -hmm. a part mm -hmm. of the string. So I want to extract only this part, name from the email address. Mm -hmm. So the first parameter is the actual string, right? Mm -hmm. So that is mm -hmm. for substring. So the looking should start from first character onwards, right? So the mm -hmm. second parameter is first. Until what time we should look for the string is care index of at the rate. That means till it mm -hmm. finds the position of at the rate. Mm -hmm. So the care index becomes a parameter for substring function. Okay. So it will extract the name. So this is what the result is. Okay. Okay. So okay. it's like once you know the functions, then you can have permutation combinations of them and then uh, apply it uh, as the logic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. So that was about string functions. Then you already know this concatenation function, right? Mm -hmm. The plus operator. Mm -hmm. it, it works fine with the characters. Like for example, when I say select ename plus job from employee. So it will give me ename and job, right? Mm -hmm. But if I want to say ename plus sal from employee, then it gets stuck. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is we need to cast this salary to its character value. So I can say cast sal as some kind character mm -hmm. or varchar, whatever, right? So then it will be able to concat the other data type with string data type. Mm -hmm. So cast is the function which we use to convert it, the data type and then attach it with email. So that was about concatenation. And then there are functions like this based on null values, functions based on null values. Now there is a function called as is null. I think we have discussed this is null yesterday, right? Yeah. Yes. So is null of what? SS is, pro and, and, uh, SQL server proprietary function. And, and there's one more thing. So once you said that you're going to share these notes, which you are uh, sharing here, 
and but i did not receive i think any notes okay so well, let's see um maybe starting monday i'll talk to uh, somebody let's say dipti or somebody and we'll see how we can make okay okay So when you say uh, is null off, then what does hmm. that mean? Is null, it okay fine. Now let me perform the same calculation without uh, what I can say is null fine, and we will see sal plus commission okay. See. 800 plus null is giving me null. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Whereas 800 plus is null of commission is giving me 800. Mm -hmm. So, do you understand this? What it is doing here is when I am saying is null of a column is null of a column and whenever it uh, takes a column let's say commission it looks for a null value and whenever it gets a null value it replaces with the given value given value means given value means the second parameter mm -hmm. so it's basically function is to look for a null value and replace it with the given value. That doesn't mean that I'm changing the data of the table, okay? <laughs> I have, uh, it's it's a select statement. I'm not making changes to the database, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I'm just changing the report, that's it. Mm -hmm. So it'll look like this. See, this was the original column and this is the uh, used with no, use is null column. Mm -hmm. So now 800 with null cannot be done properly. It will mm -hmm. yield to null only. But mm -hmm. 800 with zero can give you sal plus commission. Mm -hmm. That is what is null operator is all about. Mm -hmm. Is null is one word. Is null, it's a function. Mm -hmm. Then there is another function called as coalesce. Coalesce means it keeps on coalescing till it finds a not null value. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, select name, sal, commission, etc. Coalesce, commission, comma, zero. So, I may write it like this. Coalesce, commission, salary, zero. I can go like this. I, I, I could have said, let's say, sal plus commission, etc. So what are all these parameters? All these parameters are nothing but, if at all commission is null, it will go for salary. If salary is also null, it will go for salary plus commission. If this is also null, then it will definitely go for zero, which is a not null value. So it will keep on coalescing till it finds a not null value. Fine. So the first not null value it gets, it extracts that. So like this, there is, that's okay. There is some kind of syntactic value. So depends upon wherever it gets the value, it will extract it. Fine. Yep. So that was about coalesce. Yes. There is another function called as null if. See all these functions that we are talking about, they are related with null values. Okay. 
so null category functions we are talking about right now so null if as the name is telling null if something okay so it give it will give you null value if some condition is true so what is that condition is it accepts two arguments as you can see here it accepts two arguments if both are same it will return null but if both are not same it will return the first argument okay like this mm -hmm. see both are same so it is going to return what null but if both are not same it is going to return the first argument okay so uh, it's like uh, there are i have a table and in my table suppose i'll just tell you the columns of the table uh there is some kind of serial number okay suppose mm -hmm. serial number is there then uh, there are profits profits of quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 and quarter 4 like that and i want to compare profits of quarter 1 and quarter 2 okay now i can say select Null if q1 sorry q1 comma q2 from some kind of uh, performance is the table name. Let's say I'm just assuming this. Okay, performance. Mm -hmm. So what it will do is it will compare the values of q1 and q2. Okay, if the profits are same if the figures are same of q1 and q2 it will return null but if the profit are differing then it will return the values of quarter 1 mm -hmm. okay so how how will i how this function will be useful is i will just neglect the values wherein the data is null that means i'll come to know that there is no change in profit since last quarter mm -hmm. right so both the quarters if they have same profit figures the null if function will return null null if same that's what it's all about mm -hmm. but if quarter 2 has different number then if both the numbers are different then it will return first expression that is quarter 1's result mm -hmm. fine that is about null if function then there's one table that they, it's the function some kind of uh, table is used okay, to explain that null if okay then the next one would be case function now uh, as you know that it's not a programming language okay right now we were talking about non procedural language fine wherein uh, i do not have something like loops variables if then else conditions etc i'm just writing queries but still if i want to check for a particular condition or i want to uh, have a conditional logic created then i can take help of something called as case it's the functionality provided by sql server okay it mm -hmm. what is this case it is an expression expressions means like we say sal into 12 what is sal into 12 it is an expression isn't it mm -hmm. similarly mm -hmm. case is an expression 
uh, which is uh, provided by SQL Server. Now, what is the use of this case is it gives you if then else type of functionality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you must have used it in C or Java, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, similarly, uh, here we use instead of if then we use when then. Okay, so mm -hmm. we say when condition then some kind of uh, this thing uh, action. Okay, mm -hmm. so how we are going to use it? Let us explore. Fine. Now, what I'm going to do here is they I'm going to first compare all the jobs. Okay. And depending upon the job, I'm giving the grade to that particular job. Fine. Now, as you can see, this is an expression. So it is coming in the select part of the query. So select name job. This comma is very important. We tend to forget the comma. Okay, but we should remember that this is a part of select statement. So uh, comma, we write case. After case, we write the column for which we are comparing it. Okay, getting my point? Yes. Case, after case, we have to write the column name for which we are considering this case. So mm -hmm. which is my column name right now? My column name is job. So for job, I am con considering this entire case. So that column name is very important after case. And then I'm giving all the different conditions. When clerk, then something. When analyst, then something. So this when then part can go on. Okay, there is no restriction like there can have, there can be only two whens or three whens like that. Okay, after all the conditions, you can have the default type which is else part that means if none of the conditions are matching then it should go to the else part and give whatever is done there right <laughs> so when mm -hmm. clerk then something when analyst then something else z that means if none of the jobs are matching then go to the else part and give the grade as z fine now end this end is a compulsory uh, syntax okay so every case ends with a keyword end fine so what is the general mm -hmm. syntax case column name when then else and end that's how it goes mm -hmm. okay case column name when then else and end that is the overall structure of a case statement can you mm -hmm. tell me what is this what is this as and as grade in and else no i'm just asking about this highlighted part can you tell me what is this as grade as grade as as grade what is this no do not remember sorry it's alias given to the entire expression as yes as yeah that's why we discussed it sometime and as great so uh, now the output if i don't give this alias then this entire expression will come as column heading yeah which is job no column heading is job no no column heading is not job this entire thing will come as okay i'll remove it I will remove this and I'll execute it. See, there is no column heading for it. Mm -hmm. This is a case. So what we should do? But we want a column heading actually, and that is why we gave you, you as grade. Yes. So now we are getting grade as a column heading, and then for Whenever it is clear, it is giving me C. Salesman. Salesman is getting Z because it's not from the comparison list. Okay. Only clerks, managers, and analysts are used for case. Fine. Mm -hmm. 
fine so accordingly each person is getting the grade mm -hmm. okay now there is uh, some extension to this case as <clears throat> see right now how many conditions we are checking in this case three above when 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 yeah no actually we are checking only one condition that is jobs condition case if job yes case job so the condition yeah there are three possibilities but the condition that we are checking is only one that is for jobs value what mm -hmm. if uh, what if i want to check multiple conditions okay so in that case the syntax of case changes okay and that is the next example c now fine look at this example i have uh, let's say salary greater than equal to 5 and job equal to manager okay mm -hmm. similarly i'll not take multiple conditions 3 are sufficient manager clerk and analyst okay mm -hmm. okay else i'm saying last probably the see this is third this third there is last the conditions may not match that does that's okay that doesn't matter i'll say greater than 1000 in this case so mm -hmm. okay now we are checking here multiple conditions multiple conditions means what i am checking for salary as well as job mm -hmm. in one case isn't it earlier mm -hmm. there was only job but now i have salary as well as job so his salary has to be more than 5000 plus he has to be manager then only the first will be given to him okay so here if at all you are checking why i am telling you this because right now talking about this case i am telling you this because if at all there are multiple conditions to be used in case then after case there is no column name do you see any column name after case no no because you are checking multiple conditions so that is the change you have to make if there is one column or multiple columns understood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, just have a look at this example earlier there was only one column so we said case job mm -hmm. and in the second yes. case it will run through throughout the table in the second case we have to check multiple conditions so after case we are not giving any column name mm -hmm. so i'm just typing if yeah sharing if you, is not working actually is it yeah just now it stopped
so if if you are checking if you are checking multiple conditions in case statement then you need to skip the column name after writing case okay fine now null case concat string dates yes see basically uh, dates are different like i have told you dates are treated differently in different databases mm -hmm. now characters are case sensitive whereas dates are format sensitive what do you mean by format sensitive is Uh, some databases accepts dates in ddmo and yy format some of them accepts dates in mmdd yy format and their uh, format may differ right so uh, what is the format in sql server let's check if i say select e name sal and what is that hire date from employee so this is the format okay the way the default display is in this format okay whereas there will be some other format in some other database what is this this is hours minute seconds also it is also giving hours minute seconds format if at all you want to use it fine so this is how the dates are displayed now there are functions which are specific to dates to deal with date type of data so what are those functions the first function is get date the get date functions it it will give you the current date okay so the function that you will be using is select get date and execute so this is what today is 30th of june here so the function is giving me uh, 2019 6 that is june month and then date is 30 july right so this is what i am getting get date it gives you the current date now when i am saying current date current date of which machine it should be can you tell no clue no no did you understand my question no current date of which machine means i suppose the client is some other zone and the database is in some other zone mhm mm like it's the the so database server is in usa and the client is somewhere in uh, uk mhm mm and when the client is saying select get date it should give the date of the database server or the client's machine date mm -hmm. no no i do not know this kind of standards so basically it is give the uh, server state because see for the simple reason that uh, i send a request to the server right uh, mm -hmm. for executing the query the server processes the query and then i get the result mm -hmm. right so when i am saying select get date it is going to go to the server for execution and give the date of that machine Mm -hmm. so of course there are data types related to date which can convert the date into local machines date mm -hmm. that can be done okay fine 
so that was a get date function which gives me the current date of the machine mm -hmm. then i want to extract a part of the date okay so every time i don't want the date in uh, the format that the server is providing i want my own date format so how i can get it i can get it with date name there is a function called as date name okay now mm -hmm. how does this function return let's see how this function works like see this date name function it accepts parameters there are two parameters the first parameter is the format and the second parameter is the actual date okay so uh, the second parameter is the date that you want to provide and what are these formats me or you have not decided this format these formats are pre decided by sql server okay so mm -hmm. um, if at all i want to extract the date it will i have to type dd dd is represented representing the date part of it okay so mm -hmm. i am going to execute this see what is it giving me it is giving me 30 30 is what 30 is the date of today that is the date part mm -hmm. then instead of dd what if i type dw then it will give me day of the week that is sunday mm -hmm. okay so this is sunday and uh, so dd will give me actual number and dw will give me day of the week mm -hmm. so if there are many such formats you will have to browse through uh, the document or you you can google it out and find out what all the formats that are available with date name function okay mm -hmm. so basically it takes the date that is given to you and it extracts part of the date that you are supposed to uh, uh, you know the formats are giving you mm -hmm. for example now suppose i ask you this question uh, i'm saying display employees display all employees who joined in the sorry in the month of december Hmm. So I want to know that who all are who all joined in the month of December. So how I can take help of it? The clue is you should use get date function. Uh huh. Or you need to use it on employee table. Uh huh. Hmm. so which column you will use for it mm. which column from employee table will you use for it what do we need what what do we can try to find actually which display employee who joined in the month of december so we need the month actually the december not the day of the week rather rather date and the month should also be specified is there something else d d d w and for this case yeah i said um, which column you will use from employee table to find out this we have been using employee table right and it has got some columns hmm 
there is a column called as higher date isn't it so we can use that column we can say select suppose names of we want name of employees so we can say select e name and date name instead of higher date i'll use higher date instead of get date get date is giving me today's date but i want to talk about higher date and what i want i want month isn't it so i'll say mm mm will give me the month from it see so what it is going to give me is it is going to give me only the months from it right now my question is i want to know all those who joined in the month of december so i can use the same function in the where clause so i will not get all the employees i will get only those employees where is equal to december <coughs> sorry so there are four employees who joined in the month of december okay so this way you can uh, use this extract used date name function to extract the part of the date now see mm if i write it in small letters the display will be in small letters but if i write mm in capital letters then the display will be in capital letters actually it does display it there are two parts for it see when i am saying month small m capital m month fully spelled out like that there is i think m o n also let me just check m o n no m o n is not there only m is there okay so date name and date these are the two date name has part of the date and actual date these are the two arguments that we provide to it fine now there are the formats that are available see these are all the formats that are available which can be used along with the date name function that is if you want to print the year if you want to print the quarter if you want to print the month or day of the year that is dy then if you want to print only the date part or week that is wk dw is day of the week like we have seen sunday monday etc minutes hours etc so this way you need to just check out different permutation combinations that can be used dd dd will give you the date from the given part
okay now we have seen get date we have seen uh, date name now there is something else date part date diff and date add so these are also date related function let us check what is what does this function do there is a function called as date diff as the name is suggesting it gives you the difference between the two dates but the difference it may be in terms of years it may be in terms of date months quarters or it may be in terms of time okay so you have to provide three arguments to it that is the last two arguments are the actual dates fine so 1984 and 1997 and then i want to find out the difference is what is the difference difference in years so when i'm saying difference in years that means it is yy if i want to find out difference in days then it is dd and if i want to find out difference in months then it is mm okay so depending upon what kind of difference you want to find out that will be the difference of the date for example i'm saying select date diff i want to find out difference in terms of month so that becomes my first parameter the second parameter is the higher date and the last parameter is the date that is uh you want to find the difference of so if i execute this this is the difference of 24 months okay then i may find out the difference in case of days so these many days so this way you will be able to uh, find the difference between two dates for example um this will be helpful in identifying the age age of or it will be helpful in identifying uh, suppose date diff in terms of years i'll say and i'll say here higher date and then get date get date will give me what today's date right get it from employee so higher it so what does this mean date diff function i have used i want to find out difference in numbers of years in terms of years okay and i have provided higher it and get it so what it does is it finds out the difference in terms of years of employee when he was hired and till date so in short it is finding out the tenure of that employee in the company how long he has been working with the company in terms of years so he is being working with the company every employee's tenure is working in 39 years 38 years like that okay so this way you can find out or we can use the date diff function then there is date add function so the date add date diff is finding the difference and date add is adding number of days or years or months to the given date okay so for example date add what all parameters it is accepting it is accepting three parameters what do you want to add will be the first parameter means do you want to add days do you want to add months or years what so the format needs to be specified as the first parameter okay so that will be the first parameter 
the second parameter is how many numbers you want to add six months six years six days like that so that number will be provided as a second parameter and the third parameter is the actual date to which you want to add these things okay so let's say i'm i want to display name higher date and now i'm saying date add i want to add days three days so the first parameter is day the second parameter is three because i want to add three days and to what date i want to add them to the higher date so i'm adding them to the higher date column right now check it out let's see whether it is correct or not yes see this is 17th december and after adding 3 days it becomes 20th december right so this is correct now i may add instead of date i may add years so i'll say why why execute see it is 1980 and now after adding 3 years to it it becomes 1983 of the same date right so depending upon your date format the behavior or the display of the date will be changed so the function is date add date add now there is one function called as convert okay the convert function is a general function for converting data into new data type okay so convert <coughs> sorry the convert function can be used to display date or time data in different formats now for that there are some formats we need to use the format styles that is these are the numbers they are pre decided okay they are uh, when you use 101 that means this is the format when you use 102 that means this is the format so depending upon what format you want to have display you should give that number or you should write that number in the uh, function fine and the function that we are using is convert how to use that function it's like this convert character see because it is a date type i cannot change the date type it has to be in the date function only so i need to convert it to its character data and then use whatever format i want so first of all i need to convert it to its character data and then i can decide the date and then i can decide the format now when i'm saying 105 105 is what the format for 105 is ddmmyy format format for 107 is mmddyy format like that okay so there are different formats that can be used see every format it may be different 105 the first query will give me 36 2019 with a hyphen in it the second format is different and the third format is different with a slash as a separator right i may say here 107 let's say 107 so when i am choosing 107 the format changes it will be month date and then year so every format depending upon the format number has different styles of writing a date 
so if you want to change the default display of the date the function that you will be using is convert function so convert it into its character format and use the whatever format of date you want okay Yes, so that was all about uh, date functions. Any doubt so far? Manan, should we go ahead? Okay, I was speaking, I, I was actually muted. I said no problem. Okay, fine. Now, uh, we'll go ahead to the next category of functions. Mm -hmm. functions. This round functions, uh, they are like any other mathematical functions. Okay, just that they are used in uh, query. That's all about it. Fine. So there is nothing much explained, uh, you know, round and floor. I think we have discussed round and floor functions previously also yeah we did it, it yeah not... we did i think i remember that we discussed this right mm -hmm. rounding uh, rounding uh, the second parameter positive and the second parameter negative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the second parameter if it is positive it works on the decimal part and the second parameter if it is negative it works on the number part okay so uh, minus one minus two minus three means uh, ones place tens place hundreds place like that okay mm -hmm. fine so um, that was all about functions different functions that we had talked about uh, categories depending upon string functions date functions null functions number functions okay so uh, these are all functions that we have discussed so far mm -hmm. now now we will go to something called as sorting what all things we have studied which all clauses we have studied so far the clauses we have studied in a query is basically we have studied select from and where isn't it these are the three clauses we have discussed so far but now we are going to talk about something called as order by clause it's a new clause that we are going to discuss fine mm -hmm. now uh, just think and tell me that whenever i execute a query Suppose this is my query, select star from something, something, where something, something. Okay. When I send this query for execution, that means when I execute this query, it goes as a request to the server, right? When this query gets executed at the server, can you tell me how this query must be getting executed? That means which clause of this gets executed first? No, can't say. Select. I think select is the first one. Actually, from is the first one to get executed. Mm -hmm. because, it, because it has to know that from which table it needs to get the data, right? Mm -hmm. So the first clause that gets executed is the from clause. What could be the second one? From where? Should be where? right it's the where clause the second clause that gets executed is the where clause like uh, i know now from emp table i have to get the data but exactly which set of rows i should get from the emp table the where clause will tell me that okay mm -hmm. and then comes the select clause once i know that i have to fetch 10 rows 
out of these 10 rows how many columns should i fetch that will be uh, uh, mentioned in the select statement right mm -hmm. so uh, first is from then is where and then is the select statement that's how it goes that's the order of execution why mm -hmm. i told you why i'm telling you this because now we are going to study order by clause and when we talk about order by clause there are going to be many clauses uh, we are going to discuss okay there is something more to it that order by clause it will it gets executed it gets executed at last okay so after all the clauses are executed then comes the order by clause now what does this order by clause does is it rearranges the data into either ascending fashion or descending fashion okay that is the purpose of the order by clause fine so how does it work like so the data may be arranged in any manner but the order by clause can rearrange the output so i'll say uh, select e name comma sal comma department number okay De department number from employees this was what we were doing till now right now i want to sort this in terms of department number so what will i say i'll say order by and then the column name what is the column name dptno right so now my data will be sorted in the ascending order of departments so all tens all 20s then all 30s right now i did not mention ascending but still it as, uh, sorted the data in terms of ascending order why because the default is ascending if you don't mention anything by default it is ascending explicitly i can mention it by saying asc asc is for ascending okay so i can say execute department number ascending or if you want to sort it in descending fashion you will have to say desc okay right so you can now the data will be sorted in terms of all departments in descending fashion mm -hmm. right now when i'm talking about order by clause i can sort the data i can sort data in three different ways okay so how do i sort the data in three different ways the first one is using column names like we have seen just now the second one is using alias names third one is using column positions okay so these are three different ways by which you can sort the data so let's see how we can do that the first one is what we have right now explored the second one is using column aliases for example i want to sort the data on this salary column i'm giving a alias to it as salary okay <clears throat> and then i am saying sort on salary i want to sort this on salary and it's sorted isn't it now tell me is this a column name is this a column name salary yeah it is salary? no it is not are you are you looking at that the oh that is the output a name salary department number salary is not a column name isn't it sal is the column name 
Actually, salary is the alias, and I'm sorting on alias. So how does it know what is salary? It's not a column name. Still, it can sort on the alias name. How does mm -hmm. it know? Because somewhere we must have given as salary. Yes, we have given as salary here. Sal as salary. We have given the alias, but right. that alias is in the select statement, isn't it? So mm -hmm. how order by how order by clause knows what is salary? Because uh, in the query we have already mentioned, so it it stays there. Not sure how to put it in words. See, I told you that from where and select order by is the last one to get executed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So select select has already done its job. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Before order by clause, select has already done its job. And that is why this alias name is available to order by because order by is the last one to get executed. Mm -hmm. So it knows what is salary. It's the alias name. Okay. Fine. So I can sort on alias name. Also, I can sort on position order by three. What is this three? Column position order by three. What do you mean by three? Three, maybe the column index. Column position. Three is column what? Position. Col column position. So um, column position in the query, it's the column position, the select statement or column position of the tables column. Mm -hmm. It's not the column position of the table. It's the column position of the select statement. That is the current query. Okay, mm -hmm. so I can say order by three and it will now sort on department number. If the third column was salary, it would have sorted on uh, that particular column. Right, mm -hmm. so uh, you can sort the data based on these three things. And one more thing is you can sort data based on based on multiple columns. You can sort data based on multiple columns. Now, right now we are sorting the data, we are getting the results, so everything is working fine, isn't it? Why do I have to again sort on multiple columns? See, basically, mm -hmm. if at all the two values are same, then we take help of one more column. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll give you one example. It's like uh, there are uh, multiple subjects and the result. I need to find out the who's the topper. Right. So there are two students who have got uh, same marks. 99 and 99 out of 100 in chemistry mm -hmm. and I want to find out who's the topper so I cannot say sort on chemistry because both of them will be on same position so what mm -hmm. do I do I say sort on chemistry comma physics mm -hmm. okay so out of them anyone who's got more marks in physics will be the topper right so order by clause can have multiple columns sorting. For example, um, let's change our data. I'll say salary and job. Okay. So right now I'm saying order by sal. Mm -hmm. So what is happening here is um, No, I'll say first of all, order by clerk, uh, order by job. Okay, I'm I'm sorting on all jobs. So it will mm. start with all analysts, then clerks, managers, and salesmen, etc. Okay, now it has sorted on clerks. Now for all similar clerks, I will further sort on salary. Okay, mm -hmm. so what will I say? I'll say order by job, comma, salary. 
so now what it will do is it will first sort on all jobs and further for each job it will sort on the salary in ascending fashion mm -hmm. right now right. i can have i can have combination of uh, ascending as well as descending okay for example i can say job in desc fashion but salary i want in ascending fashion this mm -hmm. is also possible so how it will execute first of all it will sort on all jobs in descending fashion right mm -hmm. so from salesman to analyst but for each job it will sort on salary in ascending fashion so the mm -hmm. record of smith will come first mm -hmm. so you can have any combination of ascending and descending with multiple columns you can have huge list huge okay. list of columns in the order by clause okay so there's one thing uh, related to the duration of our sql class uh, i spoke to deepthi did she reach out to you not as yet so like i said yesterday that we will need to have our sql class for 1.5 hours only because we have an excel class lined up after that so so today we were late but but that's how and uh, that's how um, i sh i would be able to pull it up for another couple of months or or maybe 3 months uh, so 1.5 hours from 8:30 it it's like my 8:30 in the evening yours is 6 am in the morning so 8:30 till 10 uh, sql and then maybe 10 15 minutes break and then we start excel okay but uh, i did not receive any uh, message from uh, deepthi yeah i i oh. asked her and not not even asked her but that is what a strong limitation is coming up because that is decreasing my efficiency uh, to that level that the whole program will become uh, useless if i do not i'm not able to pay 100% attention so so 1.5 hours plus 1 hour on of excel so two other two and a half hours is is my maximum uh, concentration limit at one single stretch it's almost like single stretch i know your capacity is pretty uh, nice you have a no it's not a lot of capacity <laughs> <laughs> two and a half hours gets uh, like uh, yeah yeah even in sql like initial sessions were pretty um, uh, engaging and i was really um, into them but these two i, I understand that it, after a break of this thing then i i'm pretty exhausted with the people i was interacting with so i got busy and I, i'm exhausted so hopefully by next weekend i should be good mentally but uh, i hope 1.5 hours of sql and then 10 10 minutes break and then we oh, start with it so. okay but then our course duration will you know get uh, stretched i know but but you would want me to come as a sql professional which is my which is my goal actually so i want to listen to you i want to practice them i want to watch the videos and come up, come up with some sort of questions each class and then uh the documents you have the sample queries you have uh i i would want to go through them if you can share with me the the, the notepads the read, reading material in in the form of your queries uh that will be helpful fine so so I'll, i'll go take a break even you take and then let's catch up after 15 minutes and i think swati would not be coming up today also so we will do we two will do when i can do okay bye okay bye